In a previous video, I showed an old technology demo that I wrote which displayed 256 colour images on a standard Sega Genesis. In this video, I'll explain how that was achieved. If you look closely at this footage showing an animated sequence on an original Genesis, you can see a flickering line at the bottom of the screen. The Genesis has a hardware feature called DMA, or Direct Memory Access. This is used for all kinds of things, like copying sprite information from the cartridge to video memory or setting up a scrolling tile map. It's also used to copy colours into the CRAM, or Colour RAM, where the Genesis stores its four palettes. But, whenever you DMA a new colour palette, you get a glitch like this, sometimes referred to as CRAM dots. As each colour is copied, you get a one pixel glitch, so if you copy all 64 colours, you get 64 pixels in a row. So I wondered what would happen if you deliberately caused this glitch on each line of the screen. Well, you can see here that after a few lines you get some interesting effects. But there are gaps between each dot as the glitch only occurs for one pixel, and there is always a black space before the next dot. And there are only 64 colours in Serum, so the line would only be 64 pixels long. So I thought, what if you only change the background colour? Once changed, the background would stay that colour before the next change. So I found that there was an increment value for a DMA. This tells the hardware to move forward through memory as numbers are copied, but if I set it to zero, it meant that no matter how many numbers I copied from the cartridge to CRAM, the location I was pointing to in CRAM would never be moved forward, effectively streaming data to a single location, the background colour. The upshot of this was that you would get a stream of background colour changes which could be used to build up a full screen image. And because the Genesis had 9-bit colour, you could get 512 colours on screen at once. The only reason this demo has only 256 colour images is that at the time it was very hard to get hold of source images with more colours than that. Finally, we produced two slightly different images using a dither pattern and then swapped between them at 60 frames a second, which produced a simulated extra bit of colour precision, meaning that if we could have got hold of them, this demo could have shown simulated 4096 colour images. But what about the strange tuning sequence at the start of the demo? Well, it turned out that each piece of Sega hardware ran at a slightly different clock speed, which meant that the timing to get a stable image was slightly different on each machine. Ultimately, I decided that having to go through the tuning process was too cumbersome for the user, and instead we developed other ways of getting a lot of colours on screen for our games. But none ever ended up looking quite as good as this.